behind the wheel, he's saving all these lives nowadays because nobody cared about Adam Petty, Tony Roper, Kenny Irwin. It was five guys. Same shit happened to him. But now we kill Earnhardt, you know, we better pay attention. And thank God, because he's helped me, he's helped my son, he's helped all y'all. You know, I mean, not every racetrack can put a safer barrier up, but they can do something. You know, and, and the drivers need to, to, to make their systems better. I mean, you go over to Simpson, I mean, seven point systems. People, I, I went, I was like, you know, you guys just make the rules because you don't know. Well, okay. I mean, that's like Keselowski coming out and saying, you know, doctors don't need to be here. What do you mean? I mean, that tells me he's really fucking bullish because that's not really smart. You know, I mean, that's, I mean if I had a chance to, to baseline where I'm at to where I'm going to be, wow, okay, you know, why wouldn't you want to do that? Uh, so anytime that we had, we got to try to help this sport, and Earnhardt did that. You know, I mean, we, safer barriers. It's the systems in these cars. It's not just one thing. You can't just put a good helmet on and think you're good. Well, if it ain't connected to a good head and neck strain, then it don't do nothing. If, if the belts are pop riveted, I've seen belts pop riveted in race cars. Really? I mean, how can we get that to stop? How, how can we get somebody to look at a car before it goes on the racetrack? I mean, that's, the racetracks have to step up too. Yeah, for sure. And there are a lot of racetracks that'll worry about the wheelbase being off a half an inch, but won't look at the date on the seat belt or the date on a guy's helmet or how it's mounted. And, you know, we're not perfect by any means at our track, but we do do a pre-tech in both our late models and our uh, even our weekly classes. BMOS factory stocks all of it, and we try to catch as much as we can and try to help save the racers from themselves in a lot of a lot of ways. You know, one thing you mentioned, Doug Wolfgang. I've been to Lakeside Speedway a lot of times, both on asphalt and in dirt and i read doug's book and i mean i was so moved by it i called doug wolfgang and thanked him um several years ago when that book came out and i i think about that every single time i'm at my own racetrack or another racetrack i look around to see where the safety crew is what they have for equipment you know, it doesn't matter if we're running demo derbies or sprint cars or whatever I really you know it's something that's always really stuck with me and i urge racers to do it too if you go to a racetrack you're traveling series or something and it's not right don't race. You, you know, you got to take some responsibility, you know, put it back on the racetracks, you know, get an ambulance, get a fire crew, get the wall fixed. Even how many NASCAR guys do we see that will wreck into the opening of a wall? Like, boy, we never thought we'd hit there or whatever, you know. Uh, even the racers in that level of sport have to look at that kind of thing ahead of time, and they're adding safer barriers. You know, as a short track, we're probably one of the safer racetracks the way ours is designed and with the catch fences and the walls and you know, but I always ask, you know, what is the next step? Not only for these cars, you know, they crush, they have good crush zones and all the safety things, but what, what can the racetrack do besides a, a concrete wall and, and a catch fence? So, something we always have to be looking at and be mindful of, but uh, definitely go ahead, Tim. I was gonna mention, Dan, I know when you're talking about with racetracks, it's like, uh, people always ask benefits of, of being sanctioned and things like that. Well, like with IMC, I mean, they've got uh, some pretty good safety rules in place. They're always dealing with people like Randy. So whether it's, uh, they're looking out for the interest of the racers as well as they deal with the car builders. Uh, so I just talk about it. I mean, they're always looking at the safety. So that's one of the benefits uh, with, with being sanctioned as well. Yeah. In fact, we uh, sanctioned our B mods this year with USRA as well as our, what we call our A mods, or their USRA modifieds. And that was one of the reasons I did that. I'm not a rule maker necessarily. It's good to have those kind of organizations doing that. Uh, we're also a member of the SFI with both our uh, racetrack. I know our national series is, our drag boat series is, we are with MLRA. And you know, it, it keeps us on our toes. It, it sends us information. We put in our rules, so we keep track of all that stuff, but it's all very important. So it, it's more than just a head and neck restraint or a seat. That's very, very important, but just, you know, look at everything as a racer. Got any questions out here you'd like to throw out for any of our panelists this afternoon? You do, Chuck? I, I want to flip the page just a little bit because we've got two really good promoters in uh, this region here. And Dan, why don't you talk about a couple of your premier events that you have at Lucas Oil Speedway and help me tell us about your in, your end race. Go ahead, Dan. One thing about us, we have this crazy thing too. We have a dirt track, but we have a drag boat lake, which I know every other dirt track has one of those just right outside their property. But so we run a, a, yeah, and a slip track. Randy's been on that, speaking of hitting his head. Uh, 
Our biggest events, the Show Me 100, which is a race that we uh, bought from West Plains Motor Speedway a few years ago when the Gibson sold it. And, um, we've grown that event. This year, it's been on CBS, the only late model race been on network TV the last three years. Uh, this year, we're going to actually televise it live on MAV TV. So I urge uh, everybody, if you don't have MAV, this little sales pitch here, but if you don't have MAV TV, find a way to get it because that is going to be your motorsports destination here in the future. Uh, we recently hired Dave to Spain. I was going to debut at the Chili Bowl. That's going to be a live event as well. And, uh, yeah, I, I need a job. I got this. <laughs> like Randy and I can handle the chili bowl, couldn't be Randy? Bring a bottle of joy juice, we're good to go. One of our bigger events, Randy, was there. All your shit ended up on top of your camper that night. I, I don't know why, but when I got the next morning, nobody was around and your stuff was on your camper. You might explain that. But... <laughs> yeah, he was on your camper. All right, W, you know, Show Me's our biggest event, but we run everything from demo derbies, monster trucks. We run two national drag boat events, a nationally televised tractor pull event. Uh, we have eight of our events are actually televised races. Our Jesse Hawke, uh, Danny McMillan, Sprint Car Memorial List. So, you know, look at LucasOilSpeedway.com and uh, check it out. We're pretty fortunate. We start our year out to strong the 1st of April with uh, conjunction with a lot of other Central Iowa racetracks. Our, our Frostbuster usually get over 200 cars for that. And uh, we build up our end of the year event, the World Nationals. Uh, uh, PBM, Urson, and World Products come on board, and uh, it's 10,000 wood show. Neat thing is, uh, old Jacob Murray that won that this year, and he uh, built his own race cars. And uh, uh, for the local engine builders, it had, had to be non crates. We we have the, the ongoing. Is that going to happen? I mean, are they going to have non crate events? I mean, I think that's a great idea. There was. I mean, uh, have you ever thought about that? Because. I mean, that's a big issue, and that was a knock rate, and you had a good count and everything? Yeah, we did. In total, we had 220 cars Saturday night, and the place is packed, and it was, uh, we, we got it scheduled again for next year. Okay. And uh, a lot of sponsors are on board, a lot of engine builders, and uh, uh, it's not great for the modifieds. The other classes could still run their crates, and, uh, and definitely, like you say, the crate debate, it continues to go on. I mean, it's, it's an economical thing. Um, there, there's good, bad, and uh, we discussed that in Canada. We could have gone on for two hours about that. <laughs> Um, but we did it, it worked, we're doing it again, but uh, some great sponsors. And we're doing that just trying to help out the local engine builders. I mean, uh, uh, GM's huge, they're, they're not going anywhere. If they have a problem, Obama will bail them out. And so um, I doubt he'll bail out, bail out any local engine builders. So we'll, uh, we'll do what we can to help out the local engine builders and, uh, and keep them going along. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, we got to schedule the 18th through the 20th of September this year, a three day event. And uh, definitely, it, uh, it's grown every year. It's actually the eighth year we've done it. It started out the hack on the high banks, and, and with the uh, PBM World in person, it's now called the World Nationals. And so we're, we're pumped about 2014 already. Yeah, and I got we got to get Randy. If you've never been to the battle at the barn here in Des Moines, we do that uh, indoor go kart race. You heard Herman, Kenny Wallace, and Mike Lynette there last year, and uh, race go karts, four wheelers, three wheelers, motorcycles, lawnmowers. Uh, January 24th and 5th at the uh, Jacobs building at the fairgrounds and we, we need to get uh, I think we need to get ready to go kart up for this thing this year. No. No. Too much jello for the seat. <laughs> we and those we guys hit their heads every once in a while. It's like the court midget kids. That's one of the, uh, I think the dumbest classes out there uh, because they let the person driving the car use their head as a nerf bar. Really? You know it was like you really let that person's head hang out there and, and just, and they said, well, you have to have that to go around the corner. I was like, okay, that's perfect. Yeah, that but uh, I heard Andy Hillenberg is going to be going back to USAC uh, to, to, well, on a major role here. So I think that'll be good. I think Andy's going to do a good job. You heard that? Anything else? Any questions for him up here? Got to be something. Don't be bashful. Throw it out. What else you guys have to add? Anything uh, missing out on? Well, I'm waiting for a call. My son is making his nationwide debut in uh, Homestead today, driving for Richard Petty Motorsports. And he's, uh, he was on the chip last night because he wasn't the fastest thing there. And that's why I'm here, because I probably would have one of those engineers by the throat wondering why he's not the fastest thing there. <laughs> uh, so that's why I'm here, but my, my dad's there. And, He's worse than I am, so sometimes I catch out for my presentation, uh, and I'm not uh, uh, sensitive enough. Uh, so that's why I'm here, and my dad's here because they can just call him the crazy grandfather. And I'm up here, and I'm safe. So Grand Grandpa's can get by with that being crazy. Yeah, exactly right. That's why I'm here. So I say that's good. I'm gonna come up here, maybe watch it this afternoon, and uh, 
Hopefully they can put it back in the truck. That was my goal, is to put it back in the truck. Paul Glenn, uh, just the age-old question seems like we're all battling is, is ways to help keep expenses down. You know, I mean, we're looking at, at a wide variety of classes of people that are here. But do you guys have any any good sound ideas to, to help? You know, One of your problems with being a racer is that's why we come to shows like this to get the next best thing you know and that's why you, you, when you go to your trade shows what do you got new everybody what do you got new if you ain't got nothing new they're gonna keep walking pretty damn quick you know so you gotta you gotta come up with something new uh but racers in general if, if we get a dollar from a sponsor we're gonna spend a dollar five cents just because we should have spent a dollar ten uh, to keep up with the guy that beat you, uh, and if you don't, and if you're not getting beat, you know everybody says you're cheating. Uh, but you know I, I don't know how to keep it. I mean, I, hell, I see gas prices are finally coming down. That doesn't help a whole lot. Uh, and you know there, there's a lot of stuff that I, I don't know about back gates. Uh, uh, you know there, there's a lot of things people can do. I, I've been to a racetrack up in Woodsville, Virginia, top of the mountain. And their, and their uh, lower division class had about 20 cars in it. An old crazy ass Fred Brown that owns that place. He, the driver's meeting goes, hey, all you uh, hobby stockers, he says, if, uh, if you go see Randy and, and run through his uh, safer racer, he gives you a report card. It was a Tuesday night show, it was one of y'all shows. Uh, he says, I'll let one person in free Saturday night. Every damn car lined up just to get that one person in free. You know, he, he did things on the ticket side he goes, hey, you know, bring back your ticket from last week from the grandstand side, and you get two dollars off. You know, and I, I told that to every damn promoter I've talked to in the country. And they're like, hey, you know, he went from 800 people to 900 people. You know, that's still 100 more people. You know, and it's anything that, that somebody can do that can help you guys. And that's why I think one of these speedway benefits is gonna it's gonna open up a lot of people talking together of what works at Sitka, Kentucky, could work out here in Iowa somewhere. You know, I mean, everybody don't have a boom. You know, they don't have a Super Nationals event. They don't have a Chili Bowl event. You know, uh, Toby busts his ass for four or five big races a year events. And it's hard to get. Uh, and how long have you guys been up over there? This will be our ninth year. You know, we look at, Paul, uh, glad to have you here. We look at costs all the time on stuff, whether it be, you know, these $40,000 late model engines or a B mod that we run. And, seems like no matter what you do, if you try to specify something or put a claim on something or, you know, if you put a spec head on, then you guys got to go buy a $1,500 carburetor and make the spec head work. Or you, you just can't hardly save racers from themselves, unfortunately, and, and that's what we find. You know, you can put a chip rule on it, and then that's the guy's going to do something else or put solid pull bars on, the guy's going to go get some other trick thing. And it just seems like there's just so many. One of our most successful classes is our factory stocks. And it's a four-page rule book. We don't even have an engine rule. It's just got to be all steel. And they got 700 horse engines, but they're all steel. And, you know, they're probably eight or ten thousand dollars running factory stocks, but they can't afford thirty, forty thousand dollars late models. So it still gives them an option. And um, it is a fine line unless you really run a real stock, stock type car where you can't do anything to it. But yeah, and racers don't do anything stock for sure. They're right no. on that. Any other questions we'd like to throw out? Keith? Let me put a little bit of input in on it too. Uh, Randy started on it a little bit. I think in order for, for racers to benefit and have this thing cost effective, we've all got to do this together. I think as a racer, it's the racer's responsibility to put people in them stands as well as it is the promoter. The reason is because if that promoter doesn't do well, none of you all is going to get paid anyhow. Okay, so the, the better Clint does with his racetrack, the better you do with your racetrack, the better you do with your racetrack, the more people you have there and whatever kind of, of organization you have within that, I think it's as much respons the responsibility of the racer, racer to try to put people at that racetrack too. Because if we can do that and help these guys, that makes their job so much easier. 
to give that money back to us so we can do what you're talking about. We can actually have that extra extra money to spend on whatever it is we need for that car. Okay. What else have we got? Randy, want to add something there? Yeah, I just got a text. The kid had a good lap. So at least he didn't crash. That's good. <laughs> That's oh, a good shit. He might start. <laughs> Gonna have turkey for Thanksgiving. Really? Yeah. I got those. I had some of that last week. Matter of fact, it was a spam. Yeah. That fried spam is cool. <laughs> Hey, I went to a dirt track. Where the hell was it? Did some on a hell tour. I had filet, I mean, grilled filet and asparagus spears as a, for $5. I took pictures. I was like, this is pretty badass for a damn short track. What was it? Illinois, a little old racetrack in Illinois. I covered Grandstand, State Fairgrounds. Little place. Belleville. Belleville, that's it. That's a grilled filet and asparagus. I was like, wow, that was good. It's good. I lost my train of thought when the kid did good. Did you have a thought? Yeah, what was he talking about? Cost saving measures. Now who's cost saving? Yeah, well, I'm not quite sure where we can save. I mean, uh, the crate debate and all of that stuff. I mean, it's just a dollar bill. Uh, okay, here, now I know, got my thought. But my son, we raced him. I've had about a $250,000 budget for the last four years to race. And that's a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money racing NASCAR. Uh, so we did this k and series for three years and should have won a championship last year. We did it. Uh, won five races. So I said, okay, what, what does he need next? His next step, he needs bigger tracks. How can we go to a bigger track? They want $200,000 for a nationwide event. Uh, so I said, okay, that ain't going to happen. I said, we'll go to one race and maybe we'll get to watch the other one. So, okay, so I said, let's let's do five ARCA races. I, we can build a car, or we can buy a car, and we can do five ARCA races on speedways, mile and a half, two and a half mile racetracks. Uh, so I said, 50,000 apiece. So I said, that, 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 that'll work. And, and we did it, and he should have won four, but he won three. Uh, but the cost is stupid. Uh, to lease one of these Ford FR9 motors, was twenty-five thousand dollars for 150 laps. It came with a babysitter. The thing was tuned up. It was a badass motor, but it was twenty-five thousand uh, dollars. Ten thousand dollars for the tire for the bill. And we won three events. And the biggest check I got was eleven thousand dollars. But you know, and I said, why does that motor cost twenty-five thousand dollars? We were at Delana Harvick's 40th birthday party. She was my PR girl for three years before she met Kevin. So we got invited to her 40th birthday party and we're downstairs, Kevin, myself, Clint Boyer, Kensif, Truex, Ryan Newman, and Corey was in there. Might have been drinking a beer or 12. Uh, and I said, hey guys, as I watched the race last night, I said, hey, can you guys not feel a vibration anymore? And they're like, what do you mean? I was like, I, I watched a guy go down the back stretch with parts coming out of the exhaust. Well, that means your motor is blowing up pretty damn bad. And shit's coming out the exhaust. Really? I mean, whatever happened to neutral? Put the clutch in, put the car in neutral, and don't let it stop turning over. Well, Har they all laughed. And, and Harvick says, well, he goes, when I paid for it, I shut them off. And they all said, yeah, we don't shut them off. Well, because it costs the ARCA guy that has to, you know, that costs somebody, instead of a $20,000 fix, that's now an $80,000 fix when he got parts coming out the exhaust when he probably could have smelt that son of a bitch two laps before he blew up. I mean, but that, if, why the cost is getting so expensive is because the fuckers aren't paying attention. They, you know, it starts with the guys behind the wheel. You know, if you guys hear a problem in y'all's motor, you better shut it off. You hear, I mean, these guys just are running them till they don't go no more. And that just, really? Why do that? You know, but that's what makes it expensive for everybody. Because a $20,000 fix is now 80. Any other questions? Anything for our panelist? I think, yeah, they're here all week. Crowd shows at seven and nine, right? I think something like that. Well, let's give a nice round of applause and thank you for coming out. We definitely appreciate it very much.
like I said, Jonathan, you've got a great thing going here, and uh, your participation involvement will help make this thing work. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the week. Okay. That's Reading anything good? Not it's really. Good. It's interesting. So is that the newest one? Uh, yeah. November, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I need to subscribe to that. I always forget to. Well, that's even better.
but he said that then we got in the building. Yeah, but I seen another doing the receipts hit or something. I got him. You got the, is that car you got for show, the one you've been running? You get nothing, what do you get next? Probably. So, I saw work with our schedule, they didn't have a poor bill race on there yet. Oh, really? I thought they were, I thought that was a done deal. Hmm. Oh, really? It wasn't on their schedule, they had sitting on that table, so maybe poor bill just didn't want them to announce it yet. Maybe not, yeah. We'll see. I, I swear I saw when they put the one on the website that they were talking about having it. Oh. Maybe not. Well, hell, Tubby's around here, just ask. Good seeing you.
like 13 hours away. <laughs> Every weekend, yeah. <laughs> Pictures that we put on Facebook the other day. All you late model guys up in Minnesota from like 1980 or something. Oh, I took that yeah. girl picture. Wasn't that cool? Oh, that was cool. I seen that and I'm going, God, I wish I had that. There's one guy nobody knew who it was yet. They could figure out in the video, in the photo. So you ought to look at it. Maybe you can tell them. I didn't know. I mean, I knew a lot of them, but I didn't know who that was. Well, if you had that photo, I could tell it. Look at it. Maybe I can get my. Girlfriend to get it up on her phone for yeah. my, my phone's a piece of junk, it won't work. So, yeah, are you, are, you, are you close to getting the class scheduled again or not? Um, yeah, we would have had it done by now. This is crazy because before I did this, I did this. So, both right side.
What's Greg doing? All right, how you doing? Good. You behaving? You know better. How about you? I'm all right. I'm all right. I want to go to Springfield next week. We're having a hard time finding somebody to go. I hear you there. That's a fun little track, so. You going to get a new car next year? I will. Still got to get the old one, huh? Well, it's, you still win, so yeah, I can't complain. It would be one thing if you were back there putting around. Yeah, yeah that would probably be quick. <laughs> That's quite the show car there. Oh, buddy. Yeah, definitely. You heard how long the last one together comes out? I'm not. I haven't talked to Michael. I know we got to the banquets in three weeks. I bet he got there. I was kind of like it when they came out in November or whatever. Yeah, I kind of thought I'd see the rules be out by now. I was expecting that too, but I didn't see the rules. Yeah. Good seeing you. Hey, Terry. Yeah, thanks. It's a big huge sweeping Doing? Not bad, how you doing? Alright. Been out to the track, see what they're doing yet? Yeah, we got past there a while back to see like got some dirt on it. I guess they're putting up guardrail now. Yeah, so. guardrail. I just wonder how much of that concrete wall I could have to rip out and replace. So. Well, for this coming year, there's not too much of it. Yeah. I know they're going to do something. 17's of iron, 17's of iron. Hey, and we start here, lot number 13. We've got two, QA, 7 inch and 7 inch and 7 4 6. Gas monitor shot. Hey, Jim, it is 9 to the money. Times 2. So it's so much a shock. If the shocks break $250 a piece, the total would be $500. Times the money. And Eighty dollars, 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 e
$18,000 all time. I know. Up until about uh, five years ago, we had one in the garage. And my brother passed away, so we kind of had to unload everything. <laughs> yeah. Did you see Troy Santa? Did I who now? Troy. Or Todd. Yeah, I saw him. Thank you. 